What's up guys, uh, hope you're having a great day, weekend, wherever you are in the world. Um, a lot of things have popped up um, in the last two weeks. Um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna sound like I'm making excuses, I am. Um, but to be honest, the whole TikTok thing has uh, started to kind of make a push and uh, I've received over 14,000 followers now in the last two weeks and I've started doing live streaming, um, something that I've always really wanted to do. And I've done a couple um, in the last couple of days and uh, I started to record them. Um, as of last night, I did my first uh, recording via the camera and uh, I was answering some questions about teaching, about me and about life um, in general. So I really want to share this with you guys. And uh, if you're out there watching, I hope this brings you value. Um, I've also put in the, uh, in the caption um, uh, all the specific spots you can skip to. Um, where a, a specific question is answered. So if you have something or if you, if you read something that's of value to you, um, please check it out and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, Sev here. I am about to do something. Hey Abby, I'm about to do something that, um, that I don't know if it's ever been done before on TikTok. Probably has. It's the internet. Everything's been done before. But uh, I'm going to, I'm doing a live stream on the, uh, on the TikTok. So I'm gonna, I'm recording this right now, guys. So it's, it's on camera. So your username will be um, visible. Um, so congratulations to the people that are in the chat right now and that have commented. Your comment will be on there. Um, it's happening, it's happening. Um, and Phoenix is absolutely going ham. You, this is what's happening these days. Look at him, Phoenix, you are an absolute legend, mate. Hi, it's me. Um, Phoenix, you're on there, you're on there. I've, I've recorded that, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so, my family, my family. Um, <laughs> you are my family now, we are one. Um, so, at one point I'll be looking at my live feed, which is my TikTok live feed. I currently have 32 people online, oh my God. We've been going for over two hours now, which has been my officially my longest live feed. If you've just tuned in and you're awake, thank you for all the people that are in South Africa, America, and in Australia still who are weirdly awake, thank you for tuning in. Now, in the camera here, I'm also recording this so I can put it on YouTube. And I'm hoping that one day we can all look back at this and be like, damn, that was episode one. Oh, so. Let's begin. Let's begin. Now, the whole purpose of me recording this live chat is I realized that I have been able to give value to a few people in my live um, TikToks. Um, and people are really saying that they're like, dude, that's, that, that was actually really, that hit me right here. So I'd like to record this and I'd like to keep it and I'd like to play it over and over again for anyone that cares and that wants to add value. And then for the people on TikTok, here's a chance to become uh, uh, mentioned not on just TikTok Live, but on actual YouTube too. So ask me some questions. Ask away. I'm reading them. I'm reading them. Um, do I get told not to record at school? Uh, no, they don't care. Uh, we've talked about it. But the fact that I've told them exactly what I just said how I bring value to the kids by reaching out to them through social media is the new age of teaching, in my opinion. So, come at me, bro. Um, this is so trippy, kinda, I agree. Phoenix is asking me about, what is my favorite thing about being tall? So, Phoenix Ronpa. Um, stand up, okay. So I'll stand up, probably won't be able to be on camera here, but I'll go to the back. Sorry for the, for the camera here, but. As you can see, I am a giant. I barely fit through the door. And uh, yeah, that's my favorite part of being tall. Um, actually, the, the best part about being tall, the best part about being my height, six foot ten, and a lot of people between six foot five and higher can relate, is the fact that um, 
uh, simply the fact that I get noticed easily. And then um, by default, I also am remembered easier by default because I'm that big dude. I was that big dude. So a story about that is um, when I first graduated from university, uh, the, the idea of going on prac as a, as a school, uh, as a university student um, going to schools, um, um, I'm just getting a lot of questions, but when I finish university, when you do your pracs, you're meant to network hard enough and build rapport to be able to land a job at that school, hopefully. Now, the chances of that happening are, are, are very low uh, at days, especially permanent jobs or contracted jobs. You, the natural progression is you get relief, and then if you're a good enough relief teacher, which means you can handle the kids, you can manage their behavior well, and actually deliver the lesson you were meant to deliver. If you can do all those three, you pretty much got a permanent relief job at any school that you go to. And then then they're like, stuff giving this guy relief all the time. What about a contract? Just give him a few classes and Bob's your uncle. Yeah? So that's what happened. That's what happened. What I did straight out of uni, I went hard. I went, I, I remember printing like 20 resumes and they were all individually personalized to all of those schools. I had to do that for every single one. At first, I didn't. At first, they were all generic relief um, ones. And that was actually easier because, you know, relief could be a bit more generic. But anyway, then I, um, I decided to, what did I do? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I sent out my relief notes and then I didn't get any callbacks and anything for the first few. And then I obviously applied for some permanent jobs too. And then, um, and I was like, no, I need to go to those places. I need to make a stand. I need to actually make show my face to all those um, uh, schools. So I rang all of them up, all of them, every single one in my area. And I said, hey, uh, do you have any relief jobs going? I'd really love to drop my resume. And they're like, yeah, can you? And they're like, yeah, you can email it to us at this address. I'm like, no, I'd like to hand it in person. Now they're like, oh, some of the schools are like, oh, I'm sorry, we only accept via email, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, okay. All right, fair enough. But some schools accepted me going in person because I really wanted to talk to the relief coordinator who is in charge of handing out all the relief teachers. Fun fact. Um, then what happened was, um, um, then what happened was one school in particular said, we'll give this guy a shot. We'll give, they give everybody a shot. And I was like, wow, that's a good school. You know, give every relief teacher that comes in the door a shot. And fun fact, that was Balladura. And then, um, yeah, that, the rest was history. I did a good job. They gave me a lot of relief. I was booked out for two terms in a row. And then they gave me a contract. And then from there, I managed to get offered another contract. But at the same time, I got offered a permanent position at another school because I went for my one and only interview ever, a proper interview ever for a job, um, for like a permanent job post graduating from university and I did it, I nailed it, and did it, that was it. Um, Jaden Clark, fall off my chair, Jaden Clark, stop being annoying. Um, yeah, so that was that one, that was a question, so I'm gonna go through. So that was my favorite thing about being tall, going back to the whole story. The reason why I got picked in my, well, I mean, you're skilled, you're good and stuff, but I feel like if I got picked, it was because I showed my face. The other schools that I never showed my face in because they didn't accept my resume in person, they never got back to me. And then all the other schools eventually emailed me saying, hey, can you do relief today? And I was like, sorry, I'm, I'm a full-time full employee now. Sorry, you missed out. Bye, Felicia, you missed out. You're lost. You know? Um, yeah, so... Go to the place of, that you want to work at in person and make, your, make yourself known. Show your, show, your, show your difference. I'm very intrigued as how you came in here. Uh, I came here in your life. What challenges did you have as a child and face? Arla Grace. Thank you for the question. So, how I came to be. Um, this is all my podcast, by the way. 
um, there's a three-part series um, in the episodes if you look at them um, going into quite some detail in what I did from when I was born all the way through to me moving to Australia and then um, from my high school years all the way through to now. There's a three-part series. But in summary, I was born in the former Soviet Union um, in, the, um, in January of 1991 and then it collapsed like four months later. And then um, uh, when I lived in a, was born in Kyrgyzstan, that's what the country is called, yeah, Kyrgyzstan. And, um, and then I moved and migrated to Australia seven years later with my mum and my new stepdad. And then from there, I went to primary school, went straight into year one, didn't know a lick of English, um, ended up, you know, graduating primary school, hooray, year seven, class of 2002. And then mum got a job at in a country town called Kalgoorlie as a school teacher. And then uh, that's when we went to Kalgoorlie. And for my high school years, I was, I was lived in Kalgoorlie. I got good at footy and I got picked up by a football team in, um, um, in the back in Perth, Subiaco. And then played there for four years, moved to West Perth, played there for four years. During the time with West Perth, I decided to join um, Start University after five years of not caring about university, not having any confidence, and then I had the confidence, and then uh, got through uni, I retired from football, I built a successful business uh, of being a personal trainer throughout that time, still do that on the side a little bit, and uh, yeah, retired from footy, finished my degree, got a job as a teacher, here I am, and that's the nutshell. Um, what challenges did I face as a child? Um, I faced many challenges. I had an English, I had a language barrier for a while. Kids would tease me at school for that, um, but I got over it because one, I didn't even remember and I didn't understand anyway. So if you tease a foreign kid that doesn't know English, you're an idiot and, and you miss out on a great opportunity of helping them. You know, like I don't remember any of those kids from school, but I remember my year one teacher forever, forever for life, forever. Her name is Mrs. Weir. I will never forget her name, ever. Year one teacher. That was 21 years ago. Imagine, imagine hanging out with someone for 40 weeks of your life, every day at school as a teacher, and then they still remember you 21 years later. That's why I teach. You make that sort of an impact. Thank you for the question, Arlie Grace. That was a good one. And when did you start getting tall, mate? When I was in primary school, I'm not gonna lie. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Just an update. Still recording, guys. Good thanks. Good thanks. We're 12 minutes in. To be honest, I just checked if it was still recording. Bubbly Mickey says, I've always wanted to be a photographer. And then she says, What made you go on a um what made you want to become, um, have you, have I always wanted to be a photographer? No, I didn't like actually looking back at it all those years ago and probably back in primary school, one of my earliest memories of photography, um, was, um, my mum. my mum had like the, like a nice camera and I always wanted to play with it. Always wanted to take photos and make videos with it. I remember doing that. And uh, in high school, actually, I got like this little tiny camera. It was like a GoPro, but it wasn't. And um, and uh, I always was obsessed with doing that, actually. I was always obsessed with recording stuff and, and making things and creating things. So so I, I, I guess I've always wanted to be a creator. I just didn't have the funds or the money or the drive. Or really, I didn't really know it back then. I was really too distracted by video games. So... I guess, I guess I've wanted to do it all my life. I just didn't unlock that potential till later on. That potential didn't unlock properly until probably five years ago, four or five years ago, when I got a proper camera, like a DSLR camera. And then I started to really, yeah, get serious about my photography. And um, I never really actually um, took it seriously. I just took it as a hobby. And then I, I did say one day, this was like back in 2015, I said, you know what, one day I might sell a print 
one day I might get someone to hire me to take photos of their event or something like that. And now I've done two weddings this month already, going on my third next week. I've got four booked in next month, two in January, three February, two March, and one in April. And it's only November. I'm going to get way more bookings than that. And they're weddings. Those things pay well. But I'm not doing it for the money. I do it for the love. And that's what I feel I have a big advantage of with a lot of people from what... Observing a lot of people in the industry, from my eyes, they're just doing it because it's good money. And then they retire or they start to complain because there are younger kids who are more hungry than them doing photography and they're charging so much cheaper for wedding packages. And these old timers, okay, boomer, <laughs> these old timers or the ones that have been in there for a long time, they can't compete with the with the lower prices. Their quality of work is way better than the amateurs, obviously, or the newbies, but they just can't compete because they've been doing the same thing. They're just doing it for the money. They're not in it for the love. That's what I don't. I feel, you know. They brag about how many weddings they've done. Okay, what about telling me a story? Some of them blog about it. Some of them, and I'm not speaking about every photographer or anything like that. This is just what I've seen. There are many photographers out there, wedding photographers or whatever, who've been doing it for years who are killing it, killing it all the time because they grow. They, they grow with what is in front of them. And that's what you've got to do. So me, I just enjoy it. Like the only time I'll ever check my, my, of myself is I'll ask myself, do I enjoy it? And that's it. All right. Uh, let's go back to the... Uh, more questions about stuff. Um, my tips is just do it. Just just take photos. Just shoot. Shoot. Go take a photo right now. What do your students think of TikTok? Um, KLBDart1. Right. I got into TikTok because of my students. I'm not going to lie. Shout outs to um, Joseph Banks. You kids are the ones that got me into it. And the real reason why I got into it was because I wanted to know what you guys were interested in. And last year, I remember a year 10 class that I taught, one of the kids was on, it was called Musical.ly, you probably remember this. And uh, he was on Musical.ly and he did a lip sync and then there was, uh, everyone was watching it and making fun of him. And he, he, he didn't feel like he was being bullied. I think people were just laughing with him, not at him. But I thought it was cool that he was able to make something have the guts to upload it for everybody to see and then when someone like laughed at him with it he laughed back i reckon that was pretty gangster for a kid to do that and i was like okay i'll get one i'll just see what happens i i really just wanted to upload my turnaround video that i did ages ago that balladura kids would remember very well and uh before i know i knew it all the kids at school found my tiktok i didn't even announce it to anyone i didn't tell anyone and then after that i um I started to just make random videos, just whatever. I didn't really care. Um, and then I tried to go, I didn't get really serious about it because it's just, it's just an app. But the thing is, uh, I managed to channel my own personality into it and talk about my height, my teaching, life lessons, stuff like we're doing now. And people are finding value off from it. And I'm just like, that's my calling. There's my calling. People are enjoying it. Hey. I'm here, I'm here to stay. I've got the attention, here we are. So that's what my kids think of TikTok. First they thought it was go, and then they thought it was lame, and then they say, so you have TikTok? Oh, ew. And those, a lot of those same kids now are back on TikTok, watching my TikTok and saying, sir, can I be in your TikTok? <laughs> True story, you know who you are. <laughs> anyway, um, do you... Did you, did you I, did I used to play AFL? Yes, I did, Caden. Thank you for the question. Caden Chadwick, um, I used to play in the Waffle, uh, West Australian Football League for eight years. And then um, I just, my passion went to something else. So I retired and my attention wasn't there. I'm an all in kind of guy, all in or nothing. If I'm not fully obsessed with something, I don't really want to do it. I want to find something that I'm fully obsessed with that I just, don't stop doing and hey, I've done four live streams in a row for TikTok. I'm not saying that's my calling, 
because it doesn't pay the bills, but it's a good little hobby to have and I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to you guys, I do, and recording it, putting it on YouTube. Um, do, 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 do. Arla Grace asks me, what was the hardest life challenge or lesson I have learnt? I've learnt a lot of good life lessons, a lot of hard ones, and uh, I'm going to talk about my most recent one because it's got to do with my family. It's got to do with my immediate family. Now, what's happened was I used to live in my mum's investment house for 10 years, and it was great because there was no rent. All I had to do was maintain the house. I did. Uh, had to pay some of the rates uh, and, uh, yeah, try to do my best in maintaining the house. Not going to lie, I didn't do the best at maintaining the house because I had a life to live. And, you know, now that I've moved out, I realize I actually, you know, I need to pull my weight even harder than I did before. Otherwise, I will get actually kicked out. You know, it's like... That, and that's not even a life lesson, like, but going back to me living in her house, it was great. It was a good gravy train, pretty much, you know, I got to save a lot of money and all of that. But then my sister moved in. Now, my sister, she was 19 or 18 at the time she moved in, much to my disapproval. And not because I hate her or anything. She's just not ready to live outside of home, yet alone live with me because I've got my own life to live, you know. Anyway, she moved in with me and over a year later, I had enough and uh, packed my bags and left, moved out, moved out with my girlfriend and we're happily living in a rental place um, up the street, not up the street, another suburb, but oh, it's so good. But what the actual lesson was is I got put in charge of looking after my sister, which is to my, in my eyes not fair. Because I, I'm not at that stage of being a 28-year-old with a teenager. I do that for a living at school. I don't want to get home and have to think about a crappy housemate who's also my um, relative or my family member. So we left. That's it. And it was bad at first. It wasn't super ugly, but there was a bit of you know resistance and a little bit of disappointment, disapproval and all that stuff. But I learned the lesson that my mum originally taught me and that was, and she's the one that called me out and said, oh, you're supposed to take care of your family and stuff. Now, I don't want to, you know, say words that she may or may not have said, but long story short, short was she was disappointed. And now she's not disappointed. She wants to talk to me and we talk every now and then. It's all good. But the, the, the lesson I actually learnt was the fact that I needed to put myself first. I was mentally drained living in that house with my sister. I didn't want to have to battle her and mum and all that stuff because I didn't want to be the mediator. It wasn't my thing. I, yeah, I'm a family member. Yeah, I'm supposed to you know, help out and stuff, but I wasn't good in my head. And my girlfriend, my fiancé now, is, was not good for it. And... We had to go. We had to be selfish. And now we're better for it because there is no point being selfish, selfless and taking care of someone else if you're miserable yourself. Because if you're miserable yourself, everybody's miserable. That's the hardest lesson or challenge or lesson that I've learned so far. I'm just going to take a look at this recording, see where we're up to. 10 minutes. I'm hell paranoid because like 30 minutes in, it stops recording and you have to redo it. Um, uh, Abby Brown says, do you think you would have got this TikTok famous? I am do not consider myself TikTok famous. I'm sorry um, to, to uh, spoil the party for that question. Um, I don't know what TikTok famous is, you know, until I have constant messages asking for advice in my DMs you know, through my Instagram, YouTube, stuff like that. Instagram's my like quickest platform for you to reach out to me, by the way, um, if you want to chat about something like serious, like proper. I will help you um, as long as it's appropriate because um, I'm not all about that random crap. Um, I just do that stuff on my videos. And you can enjoy them yourself. Um, but yeah, I don't consider myself TikTok famous. 
the day I consider my TikTok, me TikTok famous is the day that I go to the shops and someone recognizes me from my TikTok every single time. Um, I will consider myself TikTok famous the day that someone flies me over east to do a meet and greet or a show or something like that um, with all the famous TikTokers of Australia because I'm one of them. That's when I know I'm TikTok famous. Right now, I'm just doing my thing, preaching to you guys. And I hate the word preach because I accidentally use it. I'm not actually preaching to you guys. I'm just telling you what I've done and what I've learned from it. And hopefully you can take it on board and make it your own. The end. And uh, even when I, if, if I do go overseas or over east or do a meet and greet and I, I don't know, whatever. I'll still come back to my living room, my lounge room, my office and still talk like this. Got to stay humble, got to stay real. And the best thing is I'm recording this. I'm recording this and I'll be uploading it on the internet. And then someone will come back to this video and, and try to call me out, but I'll still be doing it. Yeah, May not be as regularly because realistically sustaining 6 p.m. every day, every weekday, you know, things get busy. You go on holidays, you know, you go to dinners and stuff like that. It happens. But... I enjoy it and I'll do it as best I can for as long as I can. As long as you keep asking questions, finding value and hopefully sharing it too because, you know, sharing is caring. Thank you for the question, Abby Brown 17 You've been wonderful. Do you, McDootney, thank you for the question. Do you have advice on not caring what people think? Yes, I do. <laughs> so my advice on not caring what people think is this if someone comments on a video or something that you've done or something you've poured your heart into and made all the effort to um, make it happen and like you, you've edited something you've created a rap song video you you know publish something and and then you look in the comments and then you see Someone go, that sucks. That's crap. That's, uh, I don't like that. That's stupid. That's dumb. You shouldn't be doing that. You're a loser. You know, all that stuff. And, um, you know, the, the, the fact that they're, that they've watched your video or whatever you, it is you made, and the fact that they clicked the button to make the comment, and then the fact that they typed it up, they thought about it, and they typed it up and pressed enter. Hey, it's another view. It's another engagement point on your video. You know? And how do you not care about it? Well, why do you put your stuff online? Why do you do something? Why do you do anything? Because you enjoy it. Because in that point in time, you enjoy it. You personally enjoy it. Did they know you? No. You know? They're not going to tell you, that you, if, if someone tells you that they, that you shouldn't do something, that's them telling you what to do. Why does that matter? If someone tells you what to do, pfft, bye Felicia, you don't need that. And, um, you know, they could suggest something to you. They could say, hey, um, I would suggest to do it like this. And it's your choice to take it on. If it improves, winning. Shouts out, shout outs to the dude that told me to do it like this and now it's even better. But if they're just telling you that you suck, why do I suck? Turn it around onto them. If they're, if, they, if they're thinking a specific way about you, turn it around on them saying, why? But why? And if they can't answer you, then pff, problem solved. They're just trolls, you know? At the end of the day, the only person you have to ever think about is yourself. As selfish as that may sound, you're the only person that you have 100% responsibility for. You are the only person that you have 100% responsibility for. 100. You. Not your mum. Not your dad. 100% you. Because at the end of the day, if you can't take care of yourself first, you're not good to anyone. Right? That's the bottom line. Um, I hope that answers your question, McDootney. I can elaborate a little bit more, but I'll be talking for all night. Um, about that specific topic, but you do you, dude, queen. 
Sorry if I don't get your gender right. Sorry for assuming. Ooh. Okay, boomer. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Thanks for all the people that have joined. Yas Queen. Am I Aussie? Yes. Uh, you you got to do what you got to do. What Russia is like. Russia is cold in the winter and really nice in the spring. Summer's nice too. Um, it's, it's very like the movies kind of, but I'm more from the mountains. It's just fishing, hunting, going on your, your bike, <laughs> going into the waterfalls, hiking mountains, camping. It's amazing, man. Um, Hannah Pankhurst says, I made her feel better before exams the other day. Thank you for that. That's why I do what I do. Hannah Webster says, how do you deal with feeling insecure? I mean, Hannah, if you, watch, if you listen to that last response to McDoochney, um, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Well, why would you feel insecure? Like, you got to tap in deep inside your, your thought process. So, you know, being, having anxiety and, and like, my fiancé would answer this perfectly. So I might get her on live one day. She'd, she'd be able to explain it way better than I can. She's studying psychology. Um, insecurity. How do you deal with insecurity? I guess, you know, it is a psychological factor and for some people it is a chemical thing too, um, you know, a mental thing and that. Um, the thing, the way that I feel about insecurity, I can, I can go to another story, um, about, um, when I was, um, in a school and someone pulled me up on something without any warning and then said, no, nah, you're out. You're, you're kicked out. You're not going to be a teacher. You should change your career path. You should consider other things. And uh, I took that on the chin. I fought it for three months because I had to overturn the ruling because I was essentially kicked out of uni. And um, I got it overturned and approved. And then... Um, my queen. Oh, my, my, my dog is here. It's Wilson. No. <laughs> okay, so I got it overturned and then um, um, blah, blah, blah. So trying to f remember where I was. I got it overturned and, and then, yeah, I, I finished my degree and all that. And uh, But after that day, after that man... Um, um, said to me I wasn't good enough to be a teacher. Um, after I finished uni and did start work, I was walking on eggshells. I was super insecure about my work, my, about if I was actually a good teacher. Like I passed uni but was actually a good teacher. I'm always asking myself that. And the way that I got over it was obviously I had good colleagues um, but I would check on myself. I would always, you know, work on myself to be the best person I can be. If you are, this is this is it. This is this is the answer right now. And I'm sorry if it if it doesn't make sense. I might explain it to it to another differently to another day. If you are insecure about something, and if you think you're not good enough, ask yourself: Are you doing the best you possibly can to make whatever it is you're doing happen? the best possible way. And if you if you if you're honest with yourself and you are you are giving it your best shot, then it doesn't matter what anyone says and it doesn't matter what anyone how anyone judges you, you've given it your best shot. And they if they don't know that, maybe they won't, maybe they never will. It doesn't matter because you know. You know you've given it your best shot, but you have to be honest with yourself. And then the next time that opportunity comes along, do, do better. Learn from what you did last time and see how you can do better. Then over time, you build to a point where you're so much more better for it. And that comes with anything. I hope that helps. Please like, please like if you agree. Okay. McDooty. McDootney. I'll get your name right. So, comment from... Uh, this TikTok user <laughs> says that you have no friends, only no real friends, only acquaintances. That's not a bad thing. 
my mum, God bless her soul, has always told me real friends are super hard to come by. And I'm like, no, they're not. I got friends. I got real friends. And uh, periodically, every five, ten years, I'd get a new group of friends. Is it me? No. Is it them? No. It's both of us. People stay in each other's lives until there's a p- purpose that has been served by either party. So someone comes into my life, maybe they're there to teach me a lesson, or maybe I'm there to teach them a lesson, or mutual. We're both there to teach each other something, or, you know. Um, and then once they've served their purpose, they naturally will flake away. And if they really want to stay in your life, they'll do the best they can to stay in your life. If you ever had a person call you out for not catching up with you, not making time to you know, plan a time to catch up with you, and they're really crappy about it, have they tried to catch up with you as well? And if they have, then hey, it's up to you to say yes or no, it's your life. You know, for me, I make it my best, my best possible kind of goal is to make sure everybody gets, um, gets a chance to catch up. I'm not famous or anything, but you know what, like, Maybe down the track, I'll become more successful. Let's be optimistic. I will become more successful. And then people will remember me from years ago and be like, oh, Sev's doing this. Oh, he's big time. I'm going to call him, see if I can catch up. Funny that. Didn't want to catch up with me five years ago, you know. But um, a real friend. I'm going to put it back on you, McDootney. What do you define a real friend as? I would define a real friend as loyal and there for you no matter what. That's loyalty again. And you can talk to them anytime, whether it's one year or 10 years apart. You can pick the conversation right up and they're not pissy about if you're busy. They're not going to call you out on you living your life. You know, that's what a real friend is. And don't ever look for friends. Friends will come to you or you will come to them naturally. You will bump into someone, whether you're doing a hobby or living your best life or you found your best job ever. You're working with someone, you, you click and you get along. I met, I met a guy called Sam this year through Instagram, through the love of photography one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. He's my age, you know. God forbid what would have happened if we met each other in school, you know. Um, you know, we're very similar but very different, but we get along, we just we just click, you know. It takes time. I don't talk to anyone from primary school, but um, they, they still add me on Facebook. We still have each other on Facebook, you know, sometimes. Very rarely they like my stuff. I don't really consume that much, but, you know, sometimes... They got engaged or they got pregnant. Like, fantastic. Or I'm online by one, by chance it's their birthday. I'm like, happy birthday. You know? Um, okay. And then, um, and then, yeah, high school. I still only just talk to one person from high school. That's it. That's it. I went to his wedding. I was a, a groomsman for his wedding recently. You know? Times change. Don't get attached to anyone because, you know, they may disappoint you. And if they don't, you're on a good run. Don't disappoint them. Okay, I've got to press record. So Noodle Hair Girl says, what do you wish you heard more of growing up? Pretty much everything that I've been saying today, tonight, in my podcast, in my YouTube videos, everything that I've been saying that I wish I would have heard more of. But to be fair, a lot of the stuff that I'm saying is some stuff that my mum's been telling me all this time and I never clicked. And uh, yeah, now I'm just like more woed, woken. Hello. Are people still watching? Yeah, there's like 29 people still listening to me blabber on about life. We're having deep DNMs. I feel like it's been about four hours. Uh, almost three hours. Come say hi, come say hi. Okay, I'll be quick. This might be all say. Sorry to interrupt your question answering. Sabine, maybe you can answer this. 
Um, what do you wish you heard more of growing up? <clears throat> oh, I Come down here. Come down here. Okay. Yes. Hello. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wish that I just knew that it was... This is going to sound so lame. I've had a few wines. Oh. That it's... Um, yeah, totally normal to be very different. There's a lot of different people. I feel like we're both very different. Obviously, we're very tall. Um, and, yeah, we were always very different from everybody else. Um, and, yeah, I always just felt a little bit alienated because of that. But now it's, like, the coolest thing ever as an adult. So just know if you're really different, it's going to be awesome in, like, 10 years. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Thanks, babe. Good night. Love you. Good, thanks. Hope that answers your question. And that kind of matches the theme to the people that have asked about the, uh, um, what's it called? Um, being insecure and what do you do about people who judge you and stuff like that. In 10 years' time, you're going to find a lot of people who think that's the coolest thing in the world. I wish I heard more of that like 10, 20 years ago. I wish, I wish, for me personally, I wish I heard more of, dude, you are going to be a giant when you're an adult, adult, <laughs> adult, and uh, you're going to be more noticeable and you should channel all of your energy into that and not in an arrogant way, but in a like a, you know, capitalize on your genetics because people will remember you more. There's an article somewhere about, uh, multiple articles I've read now about um, tall people being more successful. Without sounding rude, I kind of see where that's coming from because we're just more easily recognized and remembered. You know, like imagine going into an interview. No disrespect to all the shorties out there. You know, you've got to find your own little niche that you can be remembered with. Maybe it's your character. Maybe it's the way that you do things. But... I go into an interview versus a guy that's five foot five, right? Same exact job, let's say with same qualifications, you know, let's say we have the same exact personality. They'd hire the taller guy. I mean, it may not be true. It may not work be that every time, but from my experience, from what hap has happened to me, my employees or my employers, the people I've talked to or worked with, They've said, yeah, you're tall, man. We just remembered you. We wanted to bring you in. And I was just like, genetics wins again. People are lucky. Some people create their own luck. Some people work for it. But hey, at the end of the day, if you keep doing it and you, you, you are your own person, you'll get to where you want to be regardless of what anyone says. True story. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you've managed to watch the whole thing, I really appreciate it. If you had a question that you, um, if you heard a question that was answered and you um, really felt it or it got to you or it brought you value, please let me know in the comments below or uh, send me a message on Instagram at Sevspix. Um, we can talk about it. Um, and if you really, like, if, if it really hit you um, in a good spot and you took something out of it i really appreciate um, if you could share the video or um, subscribe or you know all of that stuff um, because it will help spread the word to someone else that can be possibly missing out because they don't know about it um, and that's that's really all i ask of you ever okay hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks again for watching uh, my tiktok lives are on uh, at about 6 p.m australian western standard time almost every day so uh yeah i'll see you on there catch you later